told you, we just reviewed the Fantastic Four movie. I'm not doing another one. But it was so bad. I don't care. They couldn't even spell it right. Fan four stick. I don't care. It got half a percent on Rotten Tomatoes. How the hell do you do that? It found a way. Cowabunga! Ah! Black nerd? Yes. No, that one. What are you doing in the storage closet? I'm here to do the Ninja Turtle movie review with you and Angry Video Game Nerd, remember? Flashback. I don't care if the nerd is a bigger star, my face should be bigger than his on the title card. Come on, who's a bigger Ninja Turtle fan than me? Hey critic, how are you doing a Turtles crossover with the nerd? Yeah, sure, come on in. I don't care if I don't know anything about that one show. Or that one. Or that one. Really, they made another one? I totally didn't know that. But nevertheless, I am the biggest fan and I deserve to be bigger on the title card. Everything about me is bigger than him. Including that. Don't ask how I know that. Oh, Wait, you've been in the storage closet that entire time? Eh, it's not so bad. I still made videos. Hi, I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd. Today I'm gonna be reviewing boxes again. Yay, boxes. Which do you think is better, cardboard or plastic? They both keep you alive if you ever need to eat them. Like I do. I'm so cold. You think that's bad? How about the time okay, when- Okay, enough the cutaways. So, are you finally ready to do the review? Um, we reviewed that a few months ago, didn't we? Yes, but seeing how I could be facing some serious criminal charges for this, let's go ahead and do the crossover anyway. It can be any movie you want. Smurfs! Any movie you want. Smurfs! Any movie you want. Smurfs! I'm sensing an Earth Girls or Easy vibe from you. Smurfs! Fantastic Four! <laughs> Smurfs! Troll 2 it is, a little cliche, but I still think we can get some good material out of it. Hello, police! Nostalgia Critic hit out another black guy again! It's true! Oh. Let's do fucking Smurfs. Oh, oh, man, Urkel did not age well. I heard that, Theo! The Belgian comic turned into an American 80s cartoon has finally hit the big screen. Well, technically the second time. Fucking liars. Like most 80s cartoons, it banked more on selling merchandise rather than focusing on interesting stories. You take that back! Never! Please? It was mostly harmless. So much so that I'm not entirely sure how you could get that much of a movie out of it. At least, without being super creative. Well, that's exactly what they did. At first. Rumor has it Paramount originally owned the rights to the movie and were looking to make it sort of a comedic epic fantasy. Think Lord of the Rings meets Princess Bride. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. Until Sony got the rights to the movie, saw Alvin and the Chipmunks with a big hit and said, hey, we could do that, just make them blue. So, wait, they're just ripping off that terrible Chipmunks movie? No. Oh, thank God. <laughs> They're ripping off the Chipmunks movie, but they're also ripping off Enchanted, and Fat Albert, and Masters of the Universe. All that's missing is the crowding turd. <gasps> no Black Nerd! Not Roger Gastel! He's the cinematic equivalent of child syphilis! <laughs> You fool! What have you done? Yes, my satanic setup! Let the world see you for the abomination that you are! Would you like to buy some Smurf merchandise? Evil takes many forms. This is a Smurfs movie. I'll take two. It opens with narrator Smurf. No, really, there's a Smurf called Narrator Smurf. At least they're not hiding their laziness. As he talks about a place that knows no sadness. Well, clearly it can't be in this movie. A place inhabited by little blue beings. Oh, yeah! Oh, so it is an animated movie. No, that CG is supposed to look as convincing as the human characters. Really? They all look like Rocky's coach if he had Methamaglub in Amia. It's a thing, read a book! At first, everything seems to be par for the course. The Smurfs you recognize are all there, they all have names that match their one personality trait, and even the evil Gargamel, played by Hank Azaria, plots to catch them. Ah, that evil entity who wants to destroy the Smurfs' essence in order to become disgustingly rich. Hey, I was talking about Gargamel, not Sony. Ooh. Actually, in this version, he wants the Smurfs' essence to increase his magic, not to make gold or eat them. And as you can see, he's not very good at it as he spends most of his time playing with puppets rather than getting any real work done. Hey, at least they look more real than the actual Smurfs. Hey, 
God, Jezriel. You're a boy? Well, any kid's film that opens with cat balls on a beloved character's head is certainly setting the bar pretty high. Papa Smurf, voiced by Jonathan Winters, has a vision of all the Smurfs being destroyed because of a mistake Clumsy made, never realizing that maybe he made that mistake because you named them Clumsy. Clumsy? Yeah, it's like naming your daughter prostitute. Are you really encouraging any great things labeling them that? Actually, one of the stranger things is the people they got to play most of the Smurfs. Oh, come on. Celebrity voices are everywhere. Are you really surprised that people like Katy Perry and George Lopez are in this? For the main characters, no. But what if I told you that Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens, was in this? What? Where? Right there. <laughs> and now he's gone. What, they called him in for just two lines? <laughs> he got the deluxe treatment. Half of these celebrities barely even got a word. That was Keaton Thompson. What? There went B.J. Novak. Huh? Ooh, there's Jeff Foxworthy. I didn't even hear There's it. Wolfgang Puck. Why? Don't miss Joan Rivers. They blew her in for this. And of course, John Oliver's one incredible line. Oh, marvelous. Please tell me he's there to do a report about how this movie is ruining America. I think it speaks for itself. You're right. So Gargamel finally figures out that the Smurfs have kept hidden because of an invisible force field. Yes, we've gone from children's fantasy to Star Trek technology. But some of them stumble across a magic portal. Don't act like you haven't. Where Gargamel has them trapped. Looks like you got the short end of the stick, eh, Papa? Not this time, Gargamel. I much rather sacrifice my life than listen to your heinous performance. Lost. Um, because it makes much more sense to chase six Smurfs as opposed to 94. Don't think we're in Smurf Village anymore. This leads them to where every fucking portal in family films leads to... New, New York, York City. City! Preferably the very pretty and or intimidating part. Oh, hey, can we get the photographer over there? There's bigger rivals happening. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, why are we suddenly in an episode of How I Met Your Mother? Oh, don't you know? This is Neil Patrick Harris's movie now. What? I thought this was about Smurfs. Well, critic, like most sellout adaptations, the title character rarely has anything to do with the title itself. So, instead of being about little blue people... It's about an advertising VP coming to grips with becoming a father. So, we're in a romantic comedy that just happens to have Smurfs. Yep. That's like having a Holocaust film that suddenly decided it needs Fraggles. That comes out next week. I hear Oscar buzz. Until we rescue Crumsey and get back home, I need you all to stay close. I know I should be making fun of the product placement, but honestly, I'm just thinking how much better this movie would be if Blue Man Group played the Smurfs. But they wouldn't talk. Exactly! And just when you're wondering if watching a cat vomit would be more fun than watching this movie, the film decides to answer for you. <coughs> Infinitely more fun. Yes. It's like the Disney world of fun in this movie. Cat vomit! Tawny locks of Smurfette. Oh, oh, sweet follicular ambrosia. Am I the only one getting a bald Mo Sislak from an unfunny version of The Simpsons? So The Simpsons now. Up high. Oh, I must find the laboratory. This should do nicely. Ah! <laughs> Somebody's been working in dark and... Terrible magic in there. Is it even worth wasting a joke on that one? No, move on. While he tries to figure out how to get the magic out of her hair, Neil Patrick Harris visits his pregnant beard while the Smurfs try to break in. And this partakes in what I'm noticing more and more in bad family films, especially in Raja Gosnell's films, movement porn. What, you're anti-movement? No, I'm anti-lazy movement. Movement that only exists just to hypnotize your kids rather than engage them. Engaging movement involves a lot of variety. Sharp stops, varying speeds, unexpected turns. This is what makes good visual storytelling. Here, everything is at the same speed, the same pacing, and the same kind of movement. There's no variation, so there's nothing interesting about it. What's more engaging? Watching Mario go one speed throughout the entire game, or having him stop, slow down, go backwards, stomp on things? This safe, boring, and repetitive movement is the same as looking at a watch waving back and forth. They're both trying to hypnotize and relax you so that you don't think about what you're watching. And that's not what a movie is supposed to do. You're supposed to think about it. You're supposed to be sucked in. But this method is an ingenious way to numb your brains without feeling bored. So you think it must be doing something right when really it's just junk food for your mind. And it's all over the movie. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with a constant source of movement. 
Hey guys, as you probably noticed, there is a jump cut there. And there. And there. Some might say it's a fast paced way for me to save on memorizing lines. It is. Oop, pop, a doopy, random thing. You know how hard it is to do this in one go? Do I? Chester, is that why you do the fast editing? Is that what that is? I thought I was just a wizard. You never questioned how you could do this? When you're as high as I am, you learn not to question things. Whee! Subscribe! Subscribe! Are we a magazine? No, we're just supposed to say it. Oh. <laughs> subscribe! Subscribe! I'm a whore. the smurf spot talent and decide to attack him. Run! Honey, help! I think they're gonna do me in the smurf! Do not be fooled by their cuteness! So he's told who the smurfs are, and big surprise, he finds it all kinds of confusing. How crazy is this? They're little blue people. So you're sticking with your this is actually happening theory? That's actually a legit question. I always had a theory that all of this movie was just a continuation of his drug high from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. No, not even a drug person would go this far without squashing them. You wanna get high? Yeah. Hear that, honey? They're only staying till an actual blue moon rises, which could happen if the little blue Santa man makes a magic potion, which at this point seems completely plausible. <clears throat> I don't think that was in the script. I think Harris was just clarifying how horribly written this movie is. And you're all named after your personalities? Do you get your names when you're born or after you've Look. exhibited certain traits? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. So Clumsy has the personality trait of being clumsy, Grouchy has the personality trait of being grouchy, and Smurfette has the personality trait of... Girl! Girl, as we all know, girls just have one personality trait. Says so much about her. Yeah. What? You had one outfit on and now you're wearing something completely completely different. Yeah. So smurf that. She probably got the other one dirty. I love how they're shocked that she can wear different clothes, but not that she's pregnant. Having only one female made from nothing, do you think they can even comprehend the idea of a pregnant woman? Yeah, you'd think in this movie they'd go more into how Smurfs procreate. I say wizard. I say artificial Smurfination. <laughs> I have all the answers right here. No! You're a loss. There's some mighty fine blue balls in here. I had to write on the cover, cause you're not ready yet to see a smurf get smurfed in the smurf. <laughs> One of those smurfs stands for anus. But like most of Harris's performance, he acts like he wants to get out of every scene as quickly as possible. I had a crazy morning. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, nothing. I'm just, I'm excited. So tell me, Patrick, is that a smurf in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? I need to hone my message here. Oh, how about grab life by the great? Have a smurfy day. I kissed a smurf and I liked it. Get it? La, 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 Stop! La, Come on, none of you find that song just the tiniest bit annoying. I find it annoying. <coughs> Did you just laugh at a Smurfs movie? No. Did you just laugh at a Smurfs movie? No. Just remember, every time you laugh at a Smurfs movie, God kills a kitten. It's in the Bible. Huh, I don't know how I missed that. It's in the hardcover. Reads a little different than the soft cover. Gargamel uses a smurf hair to make his magic better, catching the eye of Harris's boss, played by Sofia Vergara. Thank the gods that chamber fought. <laughs> oh my god. This is really happening, people. What do we do? Just look away. I can't, it's too awful. Just close your eyes and imagine one of your kindergarten favorites It's not pissing into a bucket. <laughs> Is it working for you? Peo is rolling in his grave! Me neither. There's only one alternative! Boy, <sighs> feels so much better for some reason. Yeah, me too. But I feel like we're missing part of the movie. Oh, you're right, you're right. Let's rewind that and see what we missed. <laughs> the Smurfs end up in a toy store where, of course, all sorts of misunderstandings take place. I'm just tired of the whole dating game. Just say who you are and be who you say. Somebody okay, first, that looks nothing like a Smurf. Second, it's not even blue. Third, does he really not know it's a pillow? He has to know it's a pillow. I mean, is that something the Smurfs don't know? They just don't know what pillows are? They have to have pillows. Their hats are kind of like pillows. I mean, for the love of God, how is this scene even remotely possible? Really? Who gives a shit? Ah, <sighs> thank you, 1998 Jennifer Lopez. You're right. The more I question it, the more it shows I care. Oh, creepy. They weren't looking for a stargazer too. Dresses! You mean 
I can have more than one kind of dress. Wow, she seemed to get past the impaled heads and supposedly dressed up corpses pretty fast. Must be that defined girl personality. Gargamel tries to catch them, but then ends up getting tased. Now, that has to be funny. Gargamel getting tased? Good God, how can a movie possibly screw this up? Like that. You couldn't even make Gargamel getting tased funny. He sounds like Professor Fink getting jerked off. Ugh, I don't think we need that image. No, I don't think so either. <sighs> Much better. Oh, but I feel like we missed part of the movie. In their spare time, Smurfette reveals her troubled past. I was created by Gargamel to trap the other Smurfs. And then what happened? Papa saved me. He cast a special spell and then helped me become the Smurf I was meant to be. Oh, so much for her backstory. Yeah, who cares? We have Harris's advertising job to worry about. It's not like this movie is about Smurfs. Time to either celebrate or file for unemployment. <laughs> I think that was the banner at the movie's rap party. But we don't need to worry about that for too long as we partake in more movement porn, which also conveniently serves as trailer fodder. And product placement for Guitar Hero and or Rock Band. Walk this way! <laughs> Was the Neil Patrick Harris crotch cam really essential to this scene? I'll accept it. As long as the Smurfs don't rap. As long as- Oh my god! Not another single girl in the whole Smurfin' world and I Who are they even singing to? I know it's supposed to be like a music video, but in terms of the movie, they're just rapping into a corner. La, 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 bitch, la, 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 bitch! So, uh, what you guys doing? We're representing, fool! Yeah, player, if someone was down there looking at us, we would look amazing! You look like you're being punished. We are! Doesn't it freak you out sometimes? Little guys depending on you? That's what being a papa is. As the saying goes, you smurf it, you raise it. Gargamel is put in prison, which, let me see if anything funny is happening here. Ha! Ha! Nope. As he magically summons an army of flies to save him. Wait, <laughs> even by Smurf standards, that's just weird. But it looks like Clumsy accidentally tripped and sent the wrong design to the firm, as most trips do. Which means the wrong ad is sent all over town. You said that they would bring good luck? This is anything but good. I never should have let this happen. I never wanted a house full of little people running around. No, it's okay. I only just meant it as a metaphor for the baby. Of all the people on the planet, those magical little creatures came to us. They chose us. Don't you see how absolutely amazing that is? This is a once in a lifetime thing, Patrick. This is our blue moon. Hmm. You know, it's amazing. You are 100% wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. Yeah, Kermit's right. Nobody chose anybody. Yeah, it's clearly just a series of accidental circumstances. I'll give it this, though. It does make me crave Blue Moon. Let's go drinking after this. I think that was a given. But thankfully, Times Square is full of ironic imagery, and he realizes that hammered-in messages are good. Meanwhile, at an old bookstore, the Smurfs are looking for a book of spells, which seems to be, weirdly enough, a Smurfs comic book. The secret runes are hidden in the drawing. You see all that in there? Look here at the patterns on this page. So wait, Pale wasn't just a cartoonist, he was also a dimension jumper? Or was he a time traveler? Didn't this all take place in the past? Kinda? And upon his discoveries, all he did was make cartoons about it? I never thought I'd say this, but Smurfs, you're kind of hard to follow. Gargamel tries again to capture them, but Papa Smurf stays behind to get captured. Why? He could have just escaped with them. Well, then it wouldn't feed into the Papa sacrifice talk that they had earlier. That doesn't mean you get purposely caught for no reason. Doesn't it, Black Nerd? Doesn't it? No! Well, the director of Beverly Hills Chihuahua says it does, so shut it! Have you seen Beverly Hills Chihuahua? No, have you? You are part of 
the problem. But they get the portal to open up and bring tons of Smurfs back to save Papa. Yeah, that doesn't really work as a war song. It sounds more like a lullaby from Donald Trump. Hmm, an angry horde of people holding weapons, chanting, and wearing pointy white hats. For some reason, I feel very uncomfortable. While that's going on, Papa Smurf is being put through a machine to extract his essence. No. Was that a Smurf thing? Being afraid of onions? No. Was there an episode where an onion killed his family? No. Could the onion- No! Now why the fuck is he afraid of onions? I don't know. Indiana Jones is afraid of snakes. But not produce! There's not a scene in one of the movies where he's like, Onions. Why did it have to be onions? Let's just agree that the writers were probably on meth when they wrote this. There's no probably about it. Blue meth. Blue meth. Want to get high? Yes. Oh, but here's something neat. We get to see how Azrael gets the chipped ear. But wait, if this happened after the cartoon, shouldn't there already be a chipped ear? I guess it makes as much sense as Smurfette saving Papa Smurf only to immediately have him captured again. Price, this guy throws himself into trouble more than Bella Swan. Gotcha! I got it! But Clumsy is about to perform the action that Papa Smurf saw would doom them all. Visions never been wrong. Except when they're completely wrong. Like this time. Just put that in the bag of other plot holes this movie doesn't explain. <sighs> really? It's getting so big! I owe you an apology, Clumsy. I believe more in a vision than I did in you. From now on, you shall be called semi-competent Smurf. This leads to the Smurfs finally being sent home. I should get going. I've got a Smurf village to rebuild. Your village has given me some ideas. We're thinking about putting our garbage on the street and acting like assholes to anyone who looks at us funny. I smurf you. Really? Who gives a shit? So that was the Smurfs movie. But only by title. This has so little to do with the original cartoon. Believe it or not, in 2017, they're rebooting the Smurfs again, fully animated and more like the source material, which makes perfect sense, because this movie has nothing to do with the original Smurfs. Look, you can do that with Garfield, you can do it with the chipmunks, but the Smurfs live in a medieval fantasy world with dragons, with wizards, with witches, with magic, with sorcery, with adventure, and you decided it was more entertaining to have advertising executives, domestic parenting, New York City, Sony product placement, that is not what the Smurf stood for. It was magical, it was timeless, and you made it 2000s. And yet, it was such a big hit. Why? I'll tell you why. Because they threw a lot of money and advertising at it with no effort. People forget how all over the place the Smurfs were. It was a marketing monster that couldn't be escaped. It grabbed older people's nostalgia, younger kids' love for toys, and enough celebrities to have people shrug and be way too forgiving because of how cute it was. So wait, you're saying you can make a bundle through no effort at all as long as you just advertise it right? Pretty much. All you need is something nostalgic, celebrities, and someone who's manipulated people through advertising before. Coming this fall to a theater near you, Pet Rock. It's your childhood favorite like you've never seen it before. It jumps around to pop songs, looks cute, raps in the corner, alters some white idiot's life, and all while having a ton of celebrity voices. You remember these people age group 5 to 37, don't you? It's Amy Poehler. Waffles! Christopher Walken. You can call me Chris. Chris Rock. Selena Gomez. The Rock wants what it wants. Hey, she said the thing. And of course, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, I'm in everything, so why not be in this, motherfucker? But you don't want a movie called The Pet Rock to be about the pet rock. So we have several characters to derail the plot, like Neil Patrick Harris as the ad executive, Megan Fox as April O'Neil, Shia LaBeouf from Transformers. Do it! All right, jeez. They're just about to ride with Natalie Portman and Courtney Cox in a pink convertible with He-Man and Thor in the back seat, with a soundtrack featuring the Rolling Stones. Kid Rock, and other rock-related names. 
you know it must be good. It's on fucking everything. Pet Rock the Movie. It'll turn your heart of stone into a heart of home. Coming out the same weekend as... Is that camera still on? What the? Onions! Hey guys, Doug Walker here. Uh, you know, every time I do a Nostalgia Critic, a lot of people tune in, and I really want to do something good with that. And something I want to try that's kind of new is that I want to give a shout out to certain charities that I think are really worth your attention and really worth your support. So I'm gonna do that at the end of every video now. I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, some really special charities, preferably ones that I know something about or have had some contact with. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna start off with a charity that uh, is very, very special and they're just We've seen them work firsthand. They're phenomenal. It's onestepcamp.org. And this is a camp for children who have cancer. Here at, at this camp, you're, you're just a regular kid, and you can just feel like a regular kid. And we've seen it firsthand because you're not seen as anyone different. You're, you're like any other kid. And all these kids come together, and they share so many incredible experiences. And uh, I remember we were there on the last day. It, it was, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. I mean, it was just seeing all these kids come together, just having fun and hugging each other. I mean, they're, they're saying goodbye, and they're saying goodbye to each other, and it was just, it was the most heartwarming thing you've ever seen. I mean, it's just incredible, and these people do such great work. So if you have the time, uh, definitely go check out their website. Uh, and check out the wonderful things that they do. We've done uh, charity drives for them before and uh, we talked to them in person. They're just phenomenal people and they are definitely worth your time to check out. So if you can, definitely go take a look, show your support and donate to something that is absolutely wonderful.